Plitten field. P now is some polynomial with coefficients and k not necessarily reducible. Definition. This a splitting field of P over K is a field, an extension, where P is split that is to say, is a product of linear factors. And, well, let me give it a name, L, and the roots of P generate L. So let's say it's the smallest field extension where P is split. Theorem. Uh, theorem. One, I think, a splitting field exists, splitting field exists, and its degree over k is less or equal than g factorial, where G is the degree of P. Secondly, secondly, it is unique up to an isomorphism if L, L prime are two splitting fields then the isomorphic SK algebras but such an isomorphism will not necessarily be unique. We shall prove this theorem by induction on D. Well, if D is equal to 1, everything is trivial. Any splitting field is just k itself. So let me suppose that d is greater than 1 and theorem is proved for all polynomials of degree strictly less than d over any field k. Then what we do is we take an irreducible factor q of p. And let alpha be a root. So L is uh, K of alpha, L1, sorry, K of alpha is a stem field of Q. So over L1, we have P is X minus alpha times R, times R. And we know that we have a splitting field of R over L1 and this degree is at most 
degree of R factorial. But the degree of R is at most d minus 1. So this splitting field of R over L1 will be also a splitting field of P over K. And the degree, well, let us give it a name. Why not L? This L will be a splitting field of P over K. And its degree is equal to L over L1 times L1 over K. So, of course, it's less or equal than d minus 1 factorial times d, which is d factorial. Okay. Now it remains to prove uniqueness. Well, uniqueness up to isomorphism. Let L and L prime be two splitting fields. <clears throat> or maybe, um, let me better call it M, the other one, because I already have L1 and this might be confusing. L and M be two splitting fields. Uh, now let beta be a root of Q in uh, M. Well, Q was some irreducible factor of P. <clears throat> then K alpha, which is L1, and K beta are both stem fields for Q. So we have an isomorphism phi from K alpha to K beta, which sends alpha to beta. Now P is X minus beta times S in M of X. So where S is phi of R. So M is a splitting field of S, of course, over K of beta. M is an extension of K of beta. But now let's remember that we have also defined a field, ex a field extension as an algebra. But M is also a K of I alpha algebra via phi. K of alpha acts on M via phi, which identifies it to K of beta. Uh, and as such, it is a splitting field of R over K of alpha. Well, I know you have to meditate about this a little bit, but this is true. As soon as you view M as a K algebra, you sort of take this phi into account. So M is also a splitting field of R over K alpha. So by induction, we have yeah, K of alpha isomorphism from L to M. And, of course, we also have a K isomorphism. 
k isomorphism between L and M. So, uh, remark, the isomorphism is, of course, not unique. This isomorphism between two splitting fields is not unique. A splitting field, in particular, can have many automorphisms, many k automorphisms. And in fact, the objective of Galois theory is to study this group of automorphisms. This is, in fact, the subject of Galois theory. which you will see in a couple of lectures.